Welcome back. In this video, we will discuss the volume average FIPS.py scheme. As we discussed in the introduction, we have three options for volume averaging FIPS. We can average them over entire grains, we can average them over bands, or we can average them over subbands. First, users should ensure that for each of the three folders in the free surface effect, texture effect, and grain morphology effect that the FIPS are calculated for each microstructure. So what this means is that you should have 30 prisms, Fatemisoci, FIP, pickle files. As a quick reminder, we are working with the data set available at Material Commons. So if we navigate to the Prisms Center GitHub page and click on Fatigue, in the description, we have the data set link that takes us to Materials Commons, doi.org. And when we click on this, it takes us to the published data that we can download using Globus. If you execute this script without having these pickle files in the folders, you will simply get an error. So let's examine this script, starting with the main function. The first variable that users will change is the directory that specifies where all the microstructure instantiation and FIP data is stored. We then specify the number of instantiations. The FIP type specifies what FIP should be volume averaged. So if we calculated a different FIP and calculated FIPS.py, then the script would look for the corresponding file name. In averaging type, we specify whether we want to average the FIPS over subbands, bands, or grains. As I mentioned previously, we won't discuss the gamma plane simulations until the last video, so this can be set to false. And then this really doesn't matter what the variable number is for num gamma plane folder. We then call the call averaging function. So this function will just determine what files need to be read in to average the FIPS over the desired region. So different sections of the code will be executed based on what averaging type is set to. Let's really quickly discuss what, what it's meant by grain, band, or subband averaging. The grain averaging is the simplest approach. So what we do in this scheme is for every element, we first determine the FIP that is highest, and then we simply average these over the entire grain. Averaging grains over bands is more complicated. These bands are determined in the generate microstructures.py script. We know the crystallographic orientation for every grain, so we know the normal direction of each slip plane. We iterate through the four slip planes and we assign every element to a layer and these layers are parallel to the slip plane in question. So this means that every element then is part of one layer, one for each of the four slip planes. So this is to replicate in the real material the atomic slip planes. The final scheme simply takes these elements and assigns them to smaller regions called subbands. So the main reason to do this is that these subbands are equivalent in volume. Because if you were to average bands over a grain like I'm showing here, you can see that the first band has much fewer elements than the band in the middle. For instance, the white band here. So the subbands regularize the averaging volume. So then we can have a more appropriate comparison for the largest FIPS. When we generate these microstructures, we create a handful of other pickle files that help in the process. Element band sets and element grain sets contain the elements that belong to each band and each grain. The larger file at the end, entitled subband info, contains the information of what elements belong to each subband. In call averaging, these are the files that are read since we need to know what elements belong to each of those regions. Let's examine the three functions at the top of this script. 
The first one, entitled AL7075 Subband Averaging, iterates through the grains, the slip planes, the layers, and the subband regions. So the FIP is read for every element and then averaged over the elements in the subband. We then store this information to a pickle file, but also to a CSV file, the latter of which can be used to easily examine what is going on after we average these FIPs. The next function, entitled AL7075 Band Averaging, is almost identical, except we no longer have the line of code that iterates through the subbands. We still write the FIPs to a pickle and .csv file. The last function, entitled AL7075 Grain Averaging, simply averages the FIPs over the grain, with the nuance that we first have to determine the highest FIP per element, since we import 12 FIPs per element. Now this won't be the case if we define a new type of FIP that perhaps already has only one value per element. For instance, if we were to compute a FIP that considers the stored energy. So let's execute this script. First, set the directory to the free surface effects folder, and then to the cubic equiax free surface folder. We have 30 instantiations, so we will average FIPS over all 30. And to begin, set the averaging type to grain. This is the simplest averaging type approach, so we will start with this. Open a command prompt and navigate to the source folder where you have your volume average FIPS.py script. So this should look like this here. It should simply be the folder that has all these scripts that we already downloaded in the previous video. Type in python volume average ships.py and hit enter. So we got this printout here that says for instantiation zero, the largest grain average FIP is this, add grain so and so. And this is printed out for every instantiation. And you'll notice that the script executed very quickly because it's not too much work computationally to average FIPS in this manner. If we look in the folder, we now have new.csv and .p files. If we open one of these, let's open the first one, the one underscore zero, we have simply a column of values. So this is the FIP for each one of the grains in the microstructure. If we go to the command prompt, we see that the highest FIP is at grain 218. So if we scroll to row 218, this FIP is 0 0.00337, which matches the output here. So this gives us a quick sanity check that we are in fact receiving the same output in the command prompt and in the CSV file. Next, change the averaging type from grain to band. Hit save and re-execute this script. So now we are averaging FIPS over bands and the first thing you'll note is that it takes a little bit longer to run simply because we have more volume to go through in, in terms of how many distinct volumes we need to go through to average the FIPS. Now change averaging type to subband, hit save, and re-execute the script. So we will start this process as we discuss the files that were just created for band averaging. And the reason for this is you'll notice now the FIPS actually take much longer to volume average because we have many more subbands than we do bands and many more bands than we have grains. And we saw that for band averaging we have a set of .csv and pickle files and now we're receiving the same output for each microstructure. So let's compare, while this is being still computed, let's compare what goes on in the first instantiation. So we can open grain averaged FIPS 
for instantiation at number zero. And we will scroll and we will find the ban averaged FIPS up here, also for instantiation zero. And we'll investigate what this looks like. So this CSV file is a little bit different. We have a series of columns. So we have a column for the actual FIP value, a column for the grain number, a column for the slip system number, a column for the layer number, and then the last column simply lists the, the number of elements in each band. This CSV file is unique because we, are, we will have multiple values of FIPS for every grain. The subband average FIPS file will look similar to the band averaged. So let's open the subband average FIPS file for instantiation zero. The only difference is that we now have an additional column that specifies the subband number. And in this case, the last column states that we have eight elements in the subband. And perhaps there will be some subbands that have slightly less based on the way the microstructures are instantiated. But for the most part, this shows that the band averaged that the subband average FIPS perform well because we don't have extreme FIPS that come from a single or a few elements. So let's compare the highest values. We just talked about how the previous highest grain averaged FIP is in grain 218 with a value of 0.00337. In the band average FIPS file, we see that this is still the highest, lo the location of the highest band averaged FIP in grain 218. And this is the same for the subband. So this is making sense that even though we're averaging FIPS over different volumes, they're still very much occurring in the same location. The next observation is to examine the magnitude of the FIP. So in grain 218, the highest FIP is 0.00337. For the band averaged FIP, it's a little bit higher, 0.00347. And in the subband averaged file, it's 0.00386. So we have higher subband averaged FIPs than we have band and grain averaged FIPs. And this makes sense because as we get to the smaller subbands, we average over a smaller volume. So this is one of the limitations of the grain averaging process, is that although we saw it's very quick to perform because it took maybe a second or two in the command prompt, we smear the intense fit values at individual elements. So that might make us miss the critical fatigue crack formation driving force in some region of the grain. That's why the subband average scheme is most effective because we can capture those very extreme fatigue crack formation driving forces in sub regions of the grain. Let's close these CSV files. For the next video, users should volume average the FIPS over subband regions for each of the folders. So in total, this will mean we execute this script nine times with averaging type set to subband. Once again, because we have three folders in each one of these three files that I have highlighted here. So we will not talk about multi-axial fatigue folder until the last video. Let's summarize what we talked about in this video. We discussed the grain band and subband averaging strategies for FIPS. We executed the script for all three types and then examined the resulting FIPS. We saw that for subband averaging, the FIPS are higher, whereas they are most smeared in the grain averaging strategy. In the next video, we will then compile and plot these FIPS and fit them to extreme value distribution. Thank you for your attention, and I'll see you next time.